为何耶？Strong with two parents at home, young nigga better listen to this pimpin'. Don't you ever let the police get you slipping. Fuck playing with guns. Educate yourself, not lead your son. You gon' treat your lady right if you respect your mom. Otherwise, treat the opposition how it comes. You only a slave if you think you want, nigga. Yeah. Grind hard for the culture. They placed us behind, so you know we gotta get back. It's a lot of things that you gon' face in this world when your skin color is black. Hard for the culture, they place us behind, so you know we tryna get back. It's a lot of things that you gon' face in this world when your skin color is black, 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 black. It's black, black, black. I'm just a king from the south. I had a dream like Martin. I hope I live it out. Black on black crime. It's a new time. It ain't just the opposite. I gotta watch mine. They smile in your face. Hey, Coach Deep Arcade. What it do, man? It's your girl, Lil Chad. Yay. Hey, man. I think I think we live. I think we live. You know what I'm saying, y'all? Know what time it is? Friday night, April the twelfth. And you kicking it with your favorite people, man. Welcome to another episode. This is the old me versus new me episode of the HOG podcast show. I'm your host, Chad. It's your boy, CEO, got it. Plainly, no stainly. <laughs> hey, man, y'all know there's three things we got to do before we get into that content, man. Let's stay prayed up. Stay papered up. And stay, stay big up. up. Hey, ma. Mm-hmm. Eat the yak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Went down the smoothly today, man. Look, hopefully everybody having a good weekend. What better way to kick it off with your favorite people, man? The HLG Podcast Show. We do this shit every Friday night, 7 p.m. Appreciate everybody that's been following us, that's been following our little journey with this thing. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, comment, share all of it. You know what I'm saying? What's your grandma's favorite show? Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> For real though, <laughs> hey man, look. Uh, so tonight we talking about you know the old me versus the new me. You know what I'm saying? And we're gonna go down a long memory lane of the old us oh, versus the new us. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna we're gonna dive into topics like growth, development, uh, maturity, patience, focus, drive. You know what I mean? Whole face. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so, sir. Been in the whole face. Man, that whole fast is a motherfucker. What's up with the send them home, man? What's up with it, bro? Bro, appreciate you for typing in. What up, send them home? Jump for me, man. Share this jump for your brother, man. Yeah. We got some special announcements to make tonight, too. You know what I'm saying? At the break, y'all know we do 15 to 30 minute break, get a birthday shot, sell town building spotlight, and then we got some special announcements we're going to make for y'all. Some things that probably can help everybody that tune in with us in some type of way. You know what I mean? Appreciate that, bro. Um, so man, uh, got it. What you what you feel about the old you versus the new you? Popping it off with the the growth, like what what have you seen yourself grow from? Like, what's one thing that you would say that you grew with? Hmm. I already I already had patience, so it ain't that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, intellect. Okay. Intellect was a big growth. Well, now nah, let me let me start off with discipline. Okay. Gotta start off with discipline because I was on a I was on a track where I was, you know, 
getting out the house and try uh, try to learn a couple of different crafts. I got yeah. a uh, heavy equipment operation, so I did job call a couple of times. Heavy equipment. I can't even remember the second time. That 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 was a blur. Yeah. But uh, East Tennessee, all the way up in the mountains. And the second time I was in Joliet. So what, Joliet, yeah. Illinois. Yeah, Joliet. Okay, that's what's up. It's a little wild over there, so that's why it was a blur. <laughs> but, it seems uh, to be. Join the military? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's where I decided to uh, lock in on the discipline part. And, what's yeah. up with it, Bubba? Go, hey, yeah. folk, man. Little Bubba, appreciate little you for stepping what's in, on? man. Listen, we talking some good, informative type conversation for the youth, too, tonight, man. We talking... Uh, the old us versus the new us, you know what I'm saying? Growth, development, discipline, things that you got to do from, you know, a child to a man. That was a good little pointer right there, though, Gotti. Uh, for me, growth, I would say uh, patience for me because I, I didn't have a lot of patience at first, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And uh, developing a family, having kids, wife and stuff like that, you know what I mean? You have to, it's like a one of the main priorities and a successful yeah. family, knowing how to balance things and, and and uh have patience enough to deal with things and not give up, walk out like a lot of our family and uh fathers did back in the day, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's shit hard though, it ain't easy though, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. any of the youth, the young mm-hmm. players out there that's having babies and stuff like that, man, make sure that you having it with the right person, make sure that you evaluating yourself, evaluate the situation before mm-hmm. taking it to that step, you know what I'm saying? That that take a whole lot of slowing down. For <laughs> oh, real, look that turn up and and drinking and popping ain't gonna do nothing but enhance the BS. So you know it's gonna blind you to it. it ain't even gonna enhance it. It's gonna close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I I can also say, man, like you know, um, being able to, like the old me would address things a lot. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes addressing things a lot can be bringing stress, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's some things that need to be addressed. But uh, as I've gotten older and wiser and mature, you know what I'm saying? I feel like yeah. anything, I don't need to respond. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes yeah, don't. you don't need to respond. You feel what I'm saying? True. That shit don't do nothing but drain your energy. You know what I'm saying? When you constantly have to correct people and, hey, man, this and that, or talk to people four or five times about the same matter. You know what I'm saying? So that's something that I done grew on a lot too, but at times I get frustrated with, with that shit, you know what I mean? With with, with feeling like that um, I don't need to address something, but I do need to address it, you know what I mean? In order to get to the next space or the next, mm-hmm. you know, comfortable phase or whatever, man. It's all about being about some business. If you be about some business, then that'll change your whole perspective, especially when you got something to lose. Right. So a lot of a lot of the young guys don't have nothing to lose because they ain't never worked for nothing. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of why they they spiral like they do yeah. until they really attach themselves to something that's just a hey, making some money or like you said kids or something like that. But but yeah, yeah attach yourself to something before these kids that, yeah. that motivate you. A trade, anything, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because it's too much uh, the negative shit out here. Like, you know, being thrown in front of these youngsters' face, like, you know, do this, do that. And a lot of people that's influencing you to do the certain things don't tell you what come with doing what they're trying yeah. to get you to do. You know what I'm saying? So uh, us is, is uh, OGs in the game now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> living past, <laughs> listen, <laughs> living, living past the, uh, the point of 18, 21, 25, 30. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we unk now. We unk. Yeah, we unk now. So growing up, you know, it was it was a fearful life, like a fearful childhood, especially for black young men that was growing up. You know, we weren't we weren't uh, expected to make it as far as we made it. You know what I'm saying? We weren't expected yeah. to make it past 18, 21, 25, 30 without having a record, uh, killing somebody, selling some dope, pimping some. You know what I mean? So, what do you feel like? As being an OG now, what do you feel that we should be doing to help this present era right now? <sighs> Man, I'm not a fan of the school system. Mm-hmm. So I think it kind of start 
in high school. I mean, you should really be locking in on something. A lot of these classes is, is, is bullshit. I think you should really be – this way you should start to lock in on what you want to do so you can focus specifically on those skills. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we don't learn in history and blah, 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 blah. Yes, it's a part of it. Like history is a part of economics. If, if you look at history, you'll understand economics a lot. If you look at war, you'll understand economics and, you know, just the uh, supply and demand. If you really study those, then, you you know, you'll see how it affects the economy, like the war, like Russia, Ukraine, stuff like that. It affects the economy. I always look at it like that. Mm-hmm. But just just the schooling, man. I I can't I can't really get past that. That that's that's a big thing. Schooling on what you want to do. So the parents really need to groom the kids and, and try to figure out what they want to do. It's kind of hard because they don't they don't focus. They don't lock in. A lot of kids don't lock in and focus. Yeah. But they could lock in and focus if they had school. Also helping along with the parenting, right. so you put those together and kind of guide a kid and or or give some options. Right. You know what I mean? So if you give some options, you know what I mean. They'll have something to look forward to uh, to to dive into mentally, lock in, and like I like to show. I like to show numbers. I like to show value like okay this is a dollar but this is what a dollar do we're gonna go in the store and figure out what that one dollar do you know what i mean yeah. so I, I, then i need you i'm gonna task you out to uh figure out what that dollar do and and what it don't do like oh you want this well here's one dollar oh thank you then i'm gonna take it immediately back that one dollar yeah yeah and say okay you gotta work for this this shit ain't automatic <laughs> Right. Automatic. So I'm going to give you a chance to work with your hands to get this $1, but it's going to take you about 30 minutes, but I'm going to give you a two hour task that's going to make you make $10. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I want you to use your hands and you're going to see how easy it is to get that. But right. if you, if I give you a mental task, you know what I mean? I want you to make more money off of getting a mental task. So I would, Say, for instance, I would push my kids in, in, into IT, like every last one of them. <laughs> right. hey, hey, go into IT. Go into all this AI and all this algorithm. And all this shit that you them every day. Go into that. You know what I mean? I had bosses. Everybody don't know I did uh, IT in the military. Yeah. Nine and a half years. So I just, I'd be watching people like, like my old bosses putting their kids into that, into that field. And they learning and grabbing these jobs like two years out of high school, getting the bag. So they like, so learning early. Yeah, early, early, just on the right path and didn't even have to join the military. But that comes from the parents doing the hard work. So they had to struggle and, right. you know what I mean, enforce a certain type of standards and stuff like that. So the parent putting that, putting that, not pressure, but putting that in front right. of them and giving mm-hmm. them somewhere to drive towards. The kids still got to have drive to to go down that path that they parents trying to lead them down too. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I get what you're saying, like things outside of home ec, shop, stuff like that in school that we that we did that could be some benefit to yeah. uh, trading and stuff like that. Because shop, you get into cutting wood and doing a couple of things, but I get what you're saying. We do need more programs, especially for our community. You know what I'm saying? We need more people that's... Uh, putting trades into these young men, you know what I'm saying? So they won't have to go pick up the bag or a dope bag or, you know, rob a person or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, create different avenues and outlets. Like I see going on in certain parts of the States, like in West Memphis, like we, we, we talked about a couple of podcasts ago. It's a preacher that's doing a, a skills for trade type of uh, thing. You know what I'm saying? Basically mm-hmm. what he do is he get projects and he, um uh, invite like uh anyone from like 14 all the way up to like 18 might be a little over and he yeah. showed him the process of what it takes to put down laminate floors stuff like this so the gift yeah. the gift in it is that you know if you learn it and learn how to do that with your hands you can get out of high school and 
do a couple jobs, get your name buzzed around the town, and been to start at your own company. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And again, my, LLC, quick. My thing with that is I'm cool with any any job, any level of job, whether it be uh, hands-on or thinking. But my thing is it would be like a lead thing if he was here. Just like building the credit yeah, and gaining the knowledge and also building your credit so you can turn that, that knowledge and that hands-on into a business that you don't have to be there for, that you can hire for, that you can teach individuals to follow up under you so you don't have to do it. Yeah. But now you're going into doing your LLCs and your your credit is your credit is you know you building your credit to be a one so you're able to uh, grab certain uh, equipment vehicles and make those make money for you you know what I mean like I can't, I can't give one of my ideas to, <laughs> it, it, it's a part of the brand y'all figure it out later <laughs> <laughs> you said but I can't yeah, give one of my ownership. ideas nah ownership man ownership and following back and then franchising yourself you know what i mean different city well for me doing media marketing it's like you gotta see where the need is i like to look at a city drive around and see what they don't have yeah so a lot of people are doing the opposite like over here in germany you see donor shop three four five donor shops on one strip you know, you, y'all doing the same thing. Ain't nobody thinking outside the box. You know what I mean? So now you got to work 10 times as hard to make your place stand out when you could have yeah. just made some one thing different and had customers flooding in the so, door. So would you say they kind of resonate with development? Yeah. It's all, yeah. Yeah, it's all development. And it's, it's intelligence and development, man. Take a media and marketing class, no matter what you do, I would say media and marketing and learn some little history economics so you can understand how how the money uh flips for you now you can make money i can i can cut grass 15 dollars and at the end of the day i'd be tired of had 200 dollars. but if i'm smart enough to go grab six lawnmowers that for the low if it need a little repair fix them and then give them to five different people and find five different weed eaters and just start passing them out and say, Hey, I want a percentage of this because I own all the equipment and just send them out there to do the job. Now you're working different. smarter. Yeah. Now you're working smarter. Yeah. yeah. You can start off working smarter. You hey, can uh, build like most people won't take the time to build the business before uh, putting the business out there. You know what right. I mean? I, like we could do right now, we could say we can take a year to invest in getting five riding lawnmowers. We ain't cut no grass until next season. Yeah. And just put it out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. In multiple locations. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can be smart about it. Yeah. The development part, like you said, though, that's real, though. Just being able to um, uh, be vigilant and know what 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 certain spots it, I mean, and know what certain spots need. You know what I mean? Like over there, they might not have certain benefits or certain resources that they have over here. So how do we get that over there? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like different yeah. things like that. I feel like that's a me coming to Minnesota uh, and, and and being able to get out and travel the world. So Minnesota is like a a place where it's diversity, you know what I'm saying? You can see a lot of different cultures yeah. and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's so like Germany. Feel, yeah. yeah. So I feel like 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 uh that's a part of my growth too, you know what I'm saying? With the me versus me thing. I feel like mm-hmm. coming up here opened me up to a lot of different things, languages. I can talk a couple different languages, like the basic in you know, the basic like uh way of how to interact with other cultures. I can huh Bonics don't count. <laughs> <laughs> now I can say hello. I can say goodbye. You know what I'm saying? I can say certain things. Uh, yeah. And that comes from me being around people that had to learn me and had to learn who I was. And the same thing, vice versa. I had to learn their culture and what they do. Like, you know, 
Muslims or whatever they, they pray at a certain time yeah. of the day and um understanding that they have a month to where they fast and they do different things. The same thing with them mm -hmm. with our religions and stuff like that. So I feel like that was a part of my growth too, moving up to Minnesota in a diverse area, you know what I'm saying? And being mm -hmm. able to adapt to that without changing who I am solely. So yeah. So how was that uh how are you now with um uh, internationally like with international travel you open-minded to it then are you like most people don't leave a city at all or like i got brothers that won't leave <laughs> right so that that falls for me that falls under the fear tactic like uh i feel like the old me was fearful of a lot of things and it was mainly because of things that i was told by like family members that hadn't done these things yet or yeah. you know people that hadn't stepped up out the comfort zone or about the box you know what i'm saying that took their chance to go across the waters or overseas or to an island or any of that you know so when i took this step and uh did it you know man it opened my mind up to a whole lot of things it really inspired me and motivated me a lot like the first time we came out there to germany where you at Mm -hmm. And we kicked it with y'all. When I get back, as soon as I get back, I made this song because I was so inspired and motivated. Like, man, it's really a whole world out here. It's really people out here yeah. that are, that are vibe with you and mess with you genuinely. You know what I'm saying? In other states, in other countries. I mean, um, so uh, what, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, you, what you say? You took it out the country with no deal. Yeah, took it out the country with no deal. So as soon as I get back to the states, I dropped it, and I actually was working on it on the way back. You know what I'm saying? And then I mm -hmm. got in the studio and dropped it. But um, I'm glad that I stepped out the box and did that. I was encouraged by some other people that had uh, already stepped out the box. I appreciate the shout out too in the song. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I said, hold, on, hold on, what is it? <laughs> he said that then. But so, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I had I, I, I had an airline job at the time when I first took that trip out the country to come see out there where you was at. And uh, basically uh, I was, I was um, inspired by a person that's from Africa that had already been traveling the world. Like these folks was going to like different countries every week. And it's like, bro, they like, man, Cho, you can just keep going to Memphis, man. That ain't nothing. That's just your regular home, man. Like spread it out, go somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, man, this and that, this and that. I end up getting my passport. And then from there, I started making moves. I, and now I done been to probably like eight different countries. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I done hit Aruba, I done hit Germany, Jamaica, uh, Amsterdam, Mexico, uh, shit, what else? Uh, man, that's a lot. Oh, you ain't been, been, been to Paris yet? Yeah. I done been to Paris, I done been to London. Oh, yeah. 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 So I done took a couple steps, you know what I'm saying? I done stepped outside the box, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Bro, I said, I took, it took me about two years to actually Indeed. understand... <laughs> To actually understand what y'all was saying because of his accent. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Because your ass proper as hell, young dude. Yeah. Now, that's my brother. Shout out to my brother. He's seen a lot of growth for me, too. Like, you know what I mean? From from then to now, Nick, what you just seen, like, for us with the growth cup, man. Me and my boy, this one, we was bumping Boosie, wearing Jabo jeans and <laughs> smoking every day. You know what I'm saying? We in the bathroom writing. We used to be in the bathroom with pen and pad writing all day, me and Nick smoking back to back. You know what I'm saying? So it done been a lot of ways that I done grow, like like for us, like as an artist, as a father, as a, a businessman, trying to uh, consolidate all these things into one situation and then just execute it. You know what I'm saying? To where you go to that next level. Sometimes that's hard because, you know, Everybody don't want to see you win. That's just something you got to yeah, understand. Oh, 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 uh, speaking of that, what about the uh, on the job patience and <laughs> <laughs> you know how so, they be doing? So my on the job patience, bro, it yeah, ain't old. shit change. Ain't shit change from the old me to the new me with patience in the job. Ain't nothing changed, but the way that I approach it, like for it's like my word and how I speak, how I say things, but. Everybody that know me, like when I get mad, I, I my accent really come out. Like my country real come, really come out when I get agitated or mad. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't feel like nothing done change when it comes to that. Like me standing on what I stand on. Even when I was 17, I was telling managers that nah, you ain't finna talk to me that type of way. I'm not finna do this and that. And it ain't about pride or ego or nothing like that. It's just I know that I have something in me 
to where I don't have to depend on just this job to, you know, be all right. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yep. that's what always gave me that pushback when it comes to that. But yeah, I don't see, I don't see no difference in the old me and the new me with that though, at all. <laughs> <laughs> and that can be, be they can be good or bad, but I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't see no change in that part. That's like it's just straight, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to partners and shit like that, like you know, and uh friends and people that you bring into your comfort zone, like I feel like the old me was a more of a I I, I was I was not catering to people, but like you know. I, I cared for my partners. I cared for the people that I call my friends. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But then and understanding that your partners are the people that you call your friend may not care the way that you care. It made me think about things differently as I got older. So now, yeah, I cut the, the shit short. As soon as I see one or two red flags, your ass Saturday. You know what I'm saying? I ain't finna stick around too long. And I didn't get real comfortable with being by myself and being alone. And that's helped me grow and develop into who I am right now. A family man, father, you know what I'm saying? I'm still a hustler. Still, still, I'm still going to stand on my business if I get to. Uh, I ain't out here like robbing, taking, yearning, and, and begging for attention or none of that. I'm doing what I do at my pace. I ain't, I ain't, uh, I don't feel no type of way about nobody having more than me or less than me or nothing like that. I'm just in my own bubble right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And just trying to focus on becoming more spiritually connected because that a lot of times uh, eliminate all of the other stuff. It eliminates yeah. the fake vibes that come around you, the fake people, the negativity. You'll be able to be vigilant enough to see when somebody ain't for you. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I try to, um, that's what we try to tell the kids right now, you know, like learn things early. Don't mean you got to cut nobody off for some simple, simple, but you got to understand yeah. like if people doing their intentions and shit like that, understand that early and you will have a better life. You will be able to move forward. You will know the people that you need to bring into your group, into your mm-hmm. circle, into your comfort zone. Everybody ain't able to come to your crib. Everybody yeah. ain't friend because they smoke a blunt with you. You know what I'm saying? Like that type of shit. But I, I never heard that type of thing like, oh, just because we smoking, we cool. Like, nah, hell nah. So how you, feel, how you feel about that with the uh the relationships and the relationship the aspect like the the tolerance for for uh the BS or things that don't fit, you know what I mean? Yeah, so what you need or what you want in a relationship. Well, right well, right now I'm way more tolerant than I was back in the day because I was like, man. Back in the day, I always, like I said, I had my own. Mm-hmm. I was, I was one of the young niggas that really so had it, huh? Jay Scott in the building. Jay Scott, what's up with it, bro, bro? You know, back in the day, mm-hmm. he said, "Don't let anyone sit at the table." For for real mm-hmm. facts. Right but back there. in the day, um, I was like real short with people. You know what I'm saying? Relationships. You speaking of like girlfriends or like business partners? Yeah, yeah. Well, I would say girlfriend. Okay, we so, about yeah. back then. So yeah, girlfriends, like it was, yeah, I was real short with people because I had my own, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I was standing on shit. We moved here when I was 17. I probably got my apartment around 19, then moved out of that to like 24, 25. So I already knew what it was to, I grew on different levels that my peers didn't grow on because I was doing grown man shit at the time mm-hmm. of being immature, but still mature than others, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Like I had my own spot. I knew responsibility. I knew what it was to get up and go to work. Even if I did go to the club last night, I got to get up and go get this money. I got to learn how to put uh 600 back out of this check. So I had it rent on time every month. So mm-hmm. I taught myself a lot of things when it came to that. Uh, being on my own, being disciplined, knowing how to manage money. You know what I mean? And that's why I always make this shit look so good. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, and I, you know, a person won't be able to tell if I'm messed up or not. You feel what I'm saying? Because I know how to make it look, but I ain't going to compromise my, 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 my bills or my house to do that. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I always had that. I always had one of them characteristics. I was always like that. Yeah. For me, I think, uh, just just growing up with my mom and seeing all my aunties, 
I, I had a goal to be married by 23. Mm. That was a goal no matter what I was doing. I'm like, okay, no matter what I'm doing, that got to be a part of my whole growth. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, you know, the old school relationships lasted long. Yeah. So I want to be, I want to start early so I can say, oh, damn, I'm married 50 years. I'm married yeah. 60 years, shit like that. So I think my growth, well, I had, my tolerance was, huh, my actions were strong as fuck. Mm. But then I had to realize what I was bringing to the table don't match everybody like mentally right. it don't match every female like you can be there one two years and then the bs come i'm like I, my consistency hit way harder than yours do right like if you easily distracted then i don't know so <laughs> i had uh i had and then you know some people just ain't shit so i had a few uh a major hiccups on, on that plan just as uh not digging more into the character of who I'm talking to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who I'm interested in. So I think I got a lot of growth in digging into that that character. What you know, yeah. As you young, you don't expect a young female to just fully have that. Like right. I, as a man, I got I got a strong basis, but. As far as full character, we gonna have to grow in that. Unless you find somebody a little older and mature, if depend on where you are. Right. So I was digging through like some dope, some dope females into into a a point, Mm -hmm. into it, you know, until an extent or whatever. So I had to kind of, as I grew, be pickier about. Who I'm interested in, yeah. I mean, because I know what I'm bringing to the table, and, and I know. I, I mean, I still can't discredit because in every bad relationship, or uh, not even bad, just any past relationship, I find one piece of growth that I keep with me. You know what I mean? So uh, as I get older, I, yeah, my tolerance is lower because. Uh, mentally, yeah. my standards are higher. Yeah. So I know what I'm coming with. I know what I work. I work for as far as intellect. Where I used to work with muscle, in those times, muscle was what, how much you can lift, and how how you can work twelve hours uh, lifting this and doing it. Nah. When I joined the military, it was purely uh, of uh, intellect. It's like okay, you know. When I first joined, they wanted me to be infantry, and they told me that was the only job, and I chunked deuces on it. But yeah, hey, uh, shout geez. out to Smart Ass Gangsta on Instagram, man. Appreciate, <laughs> you. Appreciate you for, to- uh, for toning in. Yeah, I had uh, I had chunk deuces on them because they thought I was stupid. So I'm like, man, I do my research. I do use my brain all the time. So yeah, you sound like thinking ass person, though. I can say yeah. that. <laughs> Think so nigga probably- always thinking. I'm probably one of a few people that that has more than one job in the military that went to school twice, like back yeah. to back. Yeah, all one communications and one IT, right. so kind of related on the computer, satellites, Blackberries, you know, plotters, printers, all type of headaches, <laughs> all type so, of headaches. So but I, I wanted question. that. I, I knew the value after. Right. So what's the so what would you say, if anything, like what has Germany helped you with when it comes to developing yourself as a as a boss and a person that you is right now? You know what I'm saying? So uh number one, and, and it's still the number one reason why I'm still here. Peace. Ooh. Peace. Okay. You can't you can't develop that. It's either there or it's not there. We, where we come from is head on a swivel mentality. You know what I mean? Over here, you're walking on the streets freely. First of all, 
when you get on a get on a bus or wherever you first take that journey, you go into one of these villages, people just walk in. And that right there blow your mind. Like what what where they where they going? Right. You think they're going somewhere. No, nah, that's how they enjoy it. It's leisure. On Sundays is is it's a custom to just see a bunch of people enjoying themselves walking, getting out the house. Right. You know what I mean? Walking a dog on a bicycle. And you don't you don't see that. You don't I like at ten o'clock at night, quiet hour. It's quiet outside. Like you don't hear cars bumping, and you might hear a couple of idiots every now and then. But it's quiet. It's peaceful. It, it does something else for the mental. You know what I mean? It gives you it gives you uh, time to focus on other things. Mm-hmm. I'm not worried about uh, getting shot or, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not worried about a lot of things, even though where I'm from is that mentality is still there. Yeah. So I'm always, but I can walk down the street with a, with a can of beer open, a a whole bottle of. I did. uh, I did it when I was over there. And I was like, what? You can walk down the street, drink it, open that motherfucker up. Man, three (laughs) little bottle this big, if you want to say. You hear me? Tell you, sky high. Yeah. I remember, uh, who was it? A.K. Swift. AK yeah, Swift took me AK up through a little neighborhood to get a, a beer called Germania. You know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah, I remember that. I'll never forget that. It's different. That's 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 one of the things uh you can hey, let them people know about that travel. Hey, come over here. Uh, you look, gonna see something different, then you it's gone. You're gonna kick it, you're gonna have fun. <laughs> it's gonna shoot your mind to a different place. We're gonna get into that too. We got uh I got an opportunity for people for the watchers. For the uh, audience that uh, tap in with us about some travel things, you know what I'm saying? Some good travel benefits, good travel program, man. Um, I want to get into this one thing though, like on how Minnesota we develop. Then we'll take a break, but hit the break first, huh? The break first. You said take the break. You need to. You need to. You need to pay more the bill. All right, man. Y'all know what time it is. You tune in to the old me versus the new me. On the HLG podcast show. Y'all keep it live. We'll be right back. You dig?
What's up, what's up, it's CEO Gotti. Just talking to the club owners out there, over here in Germany, United States, no matter what country you are in, I'm working a deal for Bulk Designs. So Bulk Designs, you'll get your design for the entire month if you're really active on the club scene. Your entire designs for the entire month in two to three days. You know what I mean? Real quick, like, really don't waste time. You get your details together. Shoot me what you need, and I'll get you together real quick. But that's only at Bugatti Visions. It's the only place where you're going to get this type of service, that type of speed, that type of quality. You heard me? All right. You know what time it is, HOG Podcast Show. Y'all know what we do after the break. We get into the birthday shots out, the town business spotlight. Right now, we got LaVonia Real. Her birthday was this week. That's Class 01 member. Uh, shout out to her. I think her daughter's birthday was this month, too. Anyone got a birthday, put it in the comments. We'll be sure to shout them out, man. Y'all already know. Uh, town business spotlight tonight going to go to the HOG Podcast, man. The reason is because, you know, giving episodes like this to where people can really hear the good, the bad, the ugly, you know what I'm saying? The old me versus new me type thing to where you can kind of uh, redirect somebody that may be going down the wrong path or may be about to experience something that we experienced in a way that they don't have to, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to the HOG podcast show, man. Hit the horns. <laughs> Hit them bitches twice. You hear me? Twice, uh, big twice. Birthday shout out to uh Lisa Trey. Yeah, yep, sure. Yeah, he, I think you trying to be big uh one eleven plus one. <laughs> Trey, shout out to our little nephew Trey, man. Happy birthday, nephew. Uh-huh. Salute yeah. to uh Tay. Tay turn yep. hit the big four oh. Oh, you a senior citizen now. So, so you about to be able to get the McDonald's ice cream for the free? <laughs> <laughs> I see. And, uh, who else had a big day? Shout out to uh, uh yeah, Miss B. Miss B Ms. had a birthday. B's, okay. Yeah, no, hey, but Shout we, out to Miss B's, know, B's man. Shout, Shout out to Miss B. Shout out to Miss B's for stay tapping in with the HOG podcast show. Very appreciated. Mm-hmm. And, and my little brother, uh, uh, C dot. You know what I mean? My little brother Junior, him and uh, Tay, they, they uh, two days apart. All right, so see 30, that. Shout out to see that. Party. Down there in Humboldt, Tennessee. Humboldt, Tennessee. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 man. Uh, what else? So, uh, special announcements that we get. You know what I'm saying? I will be performing live out in Oakland next Thursday, which is April the 18th. You know what I'm saying? For those that didn't know, uh, I will be and a play here soon and probably like about like a month or two. I ain't really been saying a lot about it because I've been wanting to see how it plays out. But the name of that play is called uh, A Dead Be Who. I'll be playing a, a character called Isaac. He's one of the main characters. Uh, just a, a short uh, little brief intellect on it, you know what I'm saying, in a nutshell. It's just about like uh, a working man that's actually handling his business and trying to do his thing. Um and having troubles and stuff like that in between jobs, having to hustle, going to jail, doing some prison time, then getting back out and trying to stay on the right foot. Like kind of basically what we talking about right now, growth, development, yeah. you know what I'm saying, focus, uh, you know, management, you know what I'm saying, learning how to manage his time, learning how to uh man manage his actions, the things that he well, do, no, the Tanya. people that he involved. Shout out to you. Uh so that play is gonna be held at the first week of June. We're gonna be uh we're gonna be uh doing that play out in Oakland, California, man. You know what I'm saying? So this is gonna be my first time doing a little acting for us like on TV and stuff like that. But you know, I'm a natural fool, uh-huh. so we're gonna have some fun with it. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> but, you, did you catch us? We gave we gave uh Trey a shout out too. Yeah. It's funny that 
Your, your name is his his name. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, also June the 15th, we got the Germany situation going on. We're going to be out in Germany, and we're going to be there for the World Music Fest out in Germany. This will be June the 15th. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be turned up out there with CEO Gotti, DJ Baller, DJ Crush Groove, DJ Problem mm -hmm. Child, and also any artist. It's not too late yet if you want to get in on this. And also, we're going to talk about the travel right after this. So you get an outlet to get out here. So don't feel like you don't have that. But if you want to be a part of this music, uh, World Music Fest, you need to go to the Chubb App Show. Exactly how it sounds. Exactly how you see it on the flyer. Oh, yeah. You have the Chubb <laughs> Show app. I'm sorry. I always say it backwards. The Chubb Show app. And you make sure that you register as an artist. Sign up as an artist. Um, they'll let you know what to do after that for a center your music yeah. and things like that. The protocols, you feel me? You got another uh, one right there, 10, 10 May. You see it, yeah, for sure. And then, um, what else I get? So, with the travel thing, so, uh, oh, one, just, more, one more, one more, go ahead. 10th of May, right there. K Extreme Show is coming to Mannheim if you're over here in Germany. It's going to be a cave stream show with Chubb Show collaboration, Big Baller, DJ Crush Grew, hosted by myself. We're going to be turned up 90s to 2000s, R&B, hip hop, Afro beats, and lip, you know, some island music. Uh, shout dead. out to those who don't get shout outs. And uh, rest in peace to uh, DJ No Dome. And y'all see everything we do is, is big sponsored up by ourselves. Right. You hear me? So yeah, download mate. Up show app if you want to get a ticket. But we're doing a potluck. First of all, we're doing a potluck. So we all bring it food. It's BYOB. If you bring in a bottle, it is a contribution to the event, not something that you just gonna keep in your pocket. So put it on the table type. If you bring in a dish, put it on the table. You bring in some drinks, put it on the table. All the chasers, you know, Sprite, blah, 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 that that comes with it. So Come out and have a good time, man. Get your tickets on the Chub Show app, man. For sure. Everybody, if you're part of the K Stream Show family, you don't need a ticket. So don't, yeah. If you're part yeah. of the Chub Show family, you don't need a ticket. Anybody <laughs> that want to be a part of it to kick it with us that night, because we're going to kick it like never before. Get a ticket. 10 year olds. 10 year olds. Come enjoy yourself. For real, for real. You can't beat that. You really for what you gonna get? You can't beat it. So, so going into this travel thing. So as y'all cut some down, some echoing. But uh, going into this travel thing, you know, um, for the events that's going on out in Germany, you know what I'm saying? June, of, June fifteenth, and what else? What day was that? The tenth. May the tenth. So basically, uh, I just joined this program through my cousin Raven Johnson. It's called uh, Intel, Intel Travel, you know what I mean? And basically what they do is uh, book trips for people, you know what I'm saying? Cruises, uh, flights, uh, entertainment uh, tickets. Uh, you can get tickets to man, all type of stuff, boxing, uh, sports. So it's just a real rounded thing for travel. Like anything you basically want to do, you can come to us and we can either I can get it done for you or reach out and reference one of the mentors that mm -hmm. uh, help with those type of things, setting up a trip for you and your family at a feasible price. Uh, yes. We actually doing a lunch. We got a lunch. So I just joined this past week, me and my cousin Shay, under my cousin Ray Ray, uh, Calandra, Vaughn, she joined too. Um, so basically what we're going to be doing is, is having a lunch party uh, next Wednesday, that's April the 17th, on a wind down Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central Time. So um you can you are welcome to join you're welcome to come in and get informed about this program and how it can help you and your family and uh uh by joining the night of the actual uh lunch uh after talking and listening to what the program has to offer they're gonna break down everything like they're gonna break down you using it for a personal aspect and a business aspect so from what you hear if you see value in it then you submit and you pay that night to join the program you'll mm -hmm. be put into a drawing to win a three-day trip and a two-night trip voucher 
or a free flight. So I think that's beneficial. You know what I'm saying? For people yeah. that know how much it costs for a regular ticket, you paying a thousand a thousand dollars for two people or three people or whatever. I feel like this is very, you know, uh, doable. You know what I'm saying? I think that everybody mm-hmm. is trying to explore the world and get out here and do different things and see some different things that this is a program that you should buy into, even if it's just some for personal use. So we'll keep informing y'all uh, up until that day. But next Wednesday, uh, April the 17th, 8 p.m. Central Time, if you would like to join that, just hit the HOG podcast uh, Gmail at the end of the show. Let me know, or you can contact me personally. If you get my Facebook, my Instagram, stuff like that, we'll send you the Zoom link. You can come in, check it out, and then from there, you go with what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? So we create an opportunity for everybody to step out their comfort zone, get out here and see this globe like we seeing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if you ain't on show, social media, you're on mine, you're in the States, you're interested, hit me up and I'll send you in the right direction. Facts. Now, back into this me versus old me versus new me type thing. So we, we left off on how Germany de- helped develop you, what you feel that they helped develop you. And now I wanted to punch on what Minnesota yeah, did to I'm help develop man. me. <laughs> <laughs> develop me as a man. So being here in Minnesota, uh, man, I, I done had so many jobs that I feel that to help develop me into the person that I'm am, I am right now. It's like ain't too much. It ain't really nothing that i can't do and i get over that fear by having jobs at a young age up here like dealing with big ass machinery like front end loaders and shit yeah. shit that's you know you know when they uh, when they demolish buildings and you have to pick it up with that big scooper yeah. thing driving them things uh doing paint landscaping different things like this just all different type of skill set jobs you know um uh, to where like now i'm a homeowner and the things that I learned from those situations and those jobs, I've applied it to what right here at the house, putting the garden in outside, doing the landscaping on it myself instead of paying somebody to do that. You know what I mean? Painting the room if I want to change the color of the paint, I'm painting the room because that's something that I developed through a younger age and uh, not really being sold to being a painter, but just going through that experience to make a paycheck to pay the rent. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, a lot of the a lot of the jobs that I did basically put me in position to where I'm at right now. I'm able to uh, either do it myself or I either be able to reach out to somebody that I'm connected to that can do it at a feasible f- price without breaking the bank. You feel what I'm saying? Auntie Mama coming up. Our Auntie Mama in the building. Yeah. Auntie Mama in the building. What's up, Auntie? Hit the horns. Hit horns two times. Yeah, so... That's how I feel when the southern didn't develop me, man. Uh, and then on top of having my children and my wife here, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, going through mm-hmm. stuff for the family, you know what I'm saying? Having to learn how to work it out, how to be patient, how to be, uh, how to tolerate <laughs> noise and shit like that. When you get kids, you got daughters that go back and forth about small ass shit all day. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, Minnesota taught me a lot on developing, you know what I'm saying, developing as a man, as a father, as a hustler, a worker, you know what I mean? And it's a it's an open spot for young black people, like, that's trying to do business. I know so many young black folks up here, they get their stuff going, bro, just, just start a business off of just going to knock on doors, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you need your yard shoveled or you need your driveway shoveled, you know, mm-hmm. and start a business like that and then, 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 then blossom out for it, so. It's a yep. good thing that I didn't learn while being here in the state of Minnesota. What what's something you uh picked up back in the day that you still value today that keep you like grounded, rooted? Uh prayer. Prayer. Uh so prayer, you know what I'm saying? Like one thing that I picked up from back in the day from back home that didn't get me through a lot of the things that I didn't experienced and ups and downs, the in-betweens and shit up here, it's prayer, though, you know what I'm saying? Knowing and understanding how to pray to God uh, for guidance and things like that, you know what I'm saying? Encouragement, uh, direction, you know what I'm saying? That's a big thing for me because uh, my family really uh, instilled that in us, you know what I'm saying? And without that shit, I probably would have been gave up a long time ago or wouldn't even be in this position I'm in right now. So 
Mm-hmm. I would say prayer. Shout out Art. Art, Art the the OG. Big OG. OG Art Page. <laughs> hey, before we get too deep in our two, though, in Germany, man. Before we get too deep in our two, bro, I want to let everybody know that the commercial that we run, that you see, we're sponsoring ourselves. So everything within that four-minute commercial has something to do with me, Gotti, Lee, or somebody we connected to that's on our team or cross-branding with us or whatever. So the CT interior detailing, you got the Orly Kitchen, you got the Born Beast Barbecue, you got the Chubb Show app, you got the the K-Stream Show, you have art that does the uh, visuals and the graphics and, I mean, the the videos out there. And uh, Sergey. Yeah, so everything that you see in there. Barbecue, Born Beast Gun Life. Yeah. Oh, uh, paid attention. Yeah, yep. paid attention. B- Bugatti Visions. Bugatti you Visions. That's the, that's the artwork and stuff like yeah. that, you know. So that's tap a lot in. of things that, that we already do. So tap in if you need a logo enhanced, if you need some catering food, you need a DJ out there in Germany. Gotti can hook you up with the DJs if you need a DJ States for too. your event. First days too. States too, you feel me? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna add the uh, big V to that. Yeah, shout out big V, man. It's been a long time, man. I yes, ain't sir. look, I ain't, we big V came on here and gave us a good interview too. And he connected with well, he in Atlanta, right? He in uh, I think he in Alabama, but he be all around. Yeah, he's super connected. Yeah, he's super connected. Cool running DJs, uh, you know, connected to Memphis, connected to that, connected to Florida, bigger ranking, right? Yeah, man, he connected. So, how, what would you say about like? Do you feel from the old you to the new you when it came to like fighting and like you know, you know, being into confrontations? <laughs> <laughs> how have you yeah. felt? Do you feel that you uh, grew in that area? Yeah. From from your reaction, I'm saying because you know, my, my, my zero to a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Still. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like I said, when you got something uh, you value, it, it, it locks in in your head. So younger me didn't give a fuck. I call you out with social media. I post your picture, let you know I'm talking about you. Ain't no subliminals. Yeah. <laughs> So, straight to it. Yeah, straight to business. No talking. We don't straight talk a lot where I'm from. We don't do all that. Me, 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 me. We don't do none of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I mean, this is a uh, <laughs> my change is I, I can't say a recent development because I had military experiences where like, you really, you really got to like get under my skin bad. I got a three strikes rule. You know what I mean? I give you three chances. By then you should know to walk away. <laughs> because in these three strikes, these three chances, I'm walking away. <laughs> yeah. So if you pursuing after that, that's your ass. <laughs> right. I don't think that's ever gonna change. But I do, no, I do, I do believe that's gonna change. Circumstantial, you know what I mean? Right. Depending on the circumstances, but yeah, I, I, I pretty much uh, stay away from confrontation, especially uh, when I'm doing business and I got like people that that love doing business, love to know. I like to sit down. I like people to know that they can sit down with me anywhere in the world, and there ain't gonna be no drama. Everybody right. don't come with that. But I also want those same people to know if there I'm was gonna get on your ass if you play. <laughs> we, hey, we good. Right. <laughs> so hey. that, I mean, that's the best way to sum it up. <laughs> so, hey, um, the difference between an uh, 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 old me versus a new me thing is I noticed this. Um, I'm not so quick to just want to pop out no more like I used to do back in the day. Well, college days. Me college days, you know, just young nigga, just thugging and 
just outside really for no reason. You got anything at the crib, you got drink, weed, whatever you need, and you still <laughs> going out here just to be seen, just to be around yeah. people. So right. I've made it so comfortable now in my comfort zone to where like, bro, I don't, like my partners are hitting me up, man, hey, pop out with me. I'll be like, yeah, I do it in about like 7.30, bro. I'm already winding down. I'm like, you know, I done cook, ate with the kids, my feet kicked up, might be watching BML or something like this. So yeah. I don't really be having time yeah. to just pop out. It ain't that I can't or that I don't be wanting yeah. to. It's just, man, it don't, it don't, I don't get the same drive that I have for going yeah. out unless it's some business involved. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got to perform or I got to do a play or I got to come out and support somebody that I know that deserve my support. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Other than that, bro, I'm, 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 I'm put up. I'm in the crib. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I feel like that's a, that's a great, I feel like that's a good part of my growth because I was one of them every weekend, go buy a new polo shirt, get a haircut. My, yeah. wife, my boys, we doing the same thing. We got, we got the drink, we got, yeah, the girls, you know what I mean? Yeah, you got to wash, wash the car. You got to do all that. Yeah, it's, it's a whole expense. It's a whole budget to it, you feel? Yeah, it is. It's, it's nothing shy of 500. Man, <laughs> you talking about that, nigga? Look, now, Five, bro. It's worse now? Listen, haircuts, bro. I told you what it is for me and my son, right? You see, I got dreads. I only get the table with the face line up. That's why I've been... Shaggy yeah. at this jump for a minute because it's like yeah, you spend a 70 to a hundred on just the haircut, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Now, now you add the outfit in, yeah, you add the club entry in, yeah. Don't get no shoes, the Do car wash, the car wash, yeah. the, you know what I'm car saying? Wash car, the car wash. wash, what you gonna buy in the club to drink if you are if you ain't buying up a photo club, if you want them people that gotta have a drink. And when we hit the club, we gonna have a drink because somebody might try to get out of pocket and have to get the glass upside the head. So, you know, it's good. It, it, it's good. It's good to go in and buy me a little little beer bottle if yeah. I'm gonna be out. But I'm getting, a, I'm getting a bottle pregame. Yeah, are right, we gonna do that all the time? At the crib, at the crib, and food too. It's probably gonna be some yeah. food. I might be, I might be grilling. So by the time it's time to hit the scene, you already you already loaded. You full, yeah, you loaded. feeling good. You got That's you something beautiful beside you that you can rub on before you even go see the other little ranches at yeah. the club. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I feel like that's a part of me that I like about yeah. my growth. Like yeah, I yeah. like being an old nigga that's just you know, I'm I'm relaxed, I'm cool, I'm content with not having to be out. Now, if it's a yeah. comedy show, live band type shit, now oh, I yeah. go out every weekend for that type of shit because it's yeah, grown yeah. folks, you know what I mean? Yeah. But just a regular 18 plus, and I, I ain't, I don't really be with that no more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It had to be something special for me to pop out. Like when YTB came up here, I yeah. popped out to that event. But other than it, if it wasn't fam or no, nothing like that, I ain't finna pop out and do I'm nothing. Saying, I'm, said, I'm put up. I'm put up. I'm put up. <laughs> I'm hibernating. Yeah. Hibernating. Yeah, I'm, I'm I don't like I, I do you know, I'm in the entertainment business, so I don't really step out unless it's something I'm doing or I'm I'm support something the OG doing. Well, that's yeah. most more than likely good vibe shit like nineties R and B, like classic shit. You know what I mean? But yeah. yeah, like like you said, man, we got the grill fired up, man. I got the yike in the backyard. <laughs> I'm making a yike. So that's just the vibe, man. I'd rather invite you over to the house and Come on, eat man. good, sip something good. Come on, man. That's what I'm you saying. Know, I got the whole mood lights and, you know, everything. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, being being able to be comfortable with, like, just accepting it for what it is. Like, you have your times. When you in college phase, yeah, the going out at night, that may be acceptable at that point of your life, but with growth and development and stuff like that, the old you versus the new you should be in that direction. By the time you closer yeah. to 40, you shouldn't be going out to the club at night and doing Man. the same thing that 23-year-olds doing because unless you got business in it, though, you feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, you yeah, got business good. in it, that's different. But just going out just to be seen and 
looking like you still like that shit played out, bro. Don't nobody give a damn about that shit no more. We we doing grown folk business and shit. By the time we we slizzered, twisted, I'm, everybody going home and I'm rubbing I'm rubbing booty cheeks. Hey, I'm, I'm stretching. Y'all you know midnight. Y'all club hours is my stretch hours. I'm stretching shit. <laughs> like y'all out at the club at twelve oh, and shit. I'm, I I nervous stretched and and those yeah, yeah. out. I try to get put to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Night quill me, please. Yes, sir. Put me in a coma, please. Mm. Nah, but you know, like I feel like, bro, that's a that's a good thing to uh to be able to see the stuff that we've been through too. Cause just imagine going to the parties back in the day was real rough. It was shootouts and stuff at the parties that we was going to. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah, now the fight, yeah, so that's now, the fight every time. Right. So now it's to the fifth power. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so these people that's going out, they really ain't even able to really enjoy themselves. It's innocent people going out to clubs and concerts of their favorite artists and getting slain at the at, at, at an artist that they went to see just to get out the crib. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, I ain't I I, I kind of stay away from that. Uh I stay away from them younger crowds unless they mature. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you you, know? you doing to have a good time, but it's too Two people that that don't get along, two groups that don't get along, like you know how that's gonna go. Yeah. As soon as, as soon as one get into it, man, we looking for the dough. Gone. I'm gone. Like as soon as you start talking, blah 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 blah. Hey, we out. Mm. <laughs> we don't need to watch and see what happened. Right. Who get their ass whooped? Because it turned into who get their ass whooped, and then outside turned into who getting shot. We already at the house or uh, Crystal getting Crystal Burger. <laughs> <laughs> a shit burger. That's what you yeah. said. <laughs> yeah, hey, but yeah. you know, yeah, yeah then the club thing. And then I remember growing up being a little, I was a little guy all the time. You know what I'm saying? I was a little person. So I was timid, but I had a big heart though. Like I want to bag down to nobody. I right, talk shit to like anybody, that. stand up to anybody, things like that. But I was a little timid back then because of my size, you know what I'm saying? But now, like the old me versus the new me, I always stood on stuff. I always spoke my mind. I never was one of them people that bagged down easily or nothing like that. But now yeah. it's like, bro, I don't get time for that shit. If you if you if you play, then I'm gonna demonstrate. I ain't gotta yeah. get the talking loud and all that extra shit. And then I really we at the point right now to where, bro, these niggas so prideful. That if you beat them up or you get the better end of the stick, they ready to kill you behind it. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? They ready to yeah. kill you behind it. So in this world that we living in right now, you got to be ready to die even Man, when you my fist. Yeah, I, I, you got to be could, ready to die. I could be here today based off of that same situation. Yeah. Way back in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> Same situation. You know, I put put the mittens on somebody. I got jumped because I won on the one on one, and yeah, then yeah. and then you know that caught up later with that whole jumping situation. Took care of that, and then you know the, the pistol got pulled out. Could have yeah. been gone. Could have been gone. My mama could have yeah. been gone. My grandma could have been gone. Straight you up. know what I mean? Because they came to the house. You know what I mean? Bro, speaking yeah. of that shit. Speaking of that shit, bro. Minnesota, man. Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I just seen this today on this thing that got called Lake Street something. It's mm -hmm. like something live on Lake Street. So it's like a podcast that they get. And basically they were showing that these young black girls went to this girl crib. Now, the backstory of this situation, I think one of the girls that came to the crib got jumped by this girl house that they went to. You know what I'm saying? So the girl got jumped. She came over to the girl house with her cousin. Bro, they came through the window, fam. Huh? Came through, man, came through the girl window. Went really? inside her house and whooped her ass in the bathroom, like like beating her, kicking on her, what? all type of shit. And I'm like, so one of my partners, Isaiah Hudson, that be tuning in with us all the time. I, I yeah. said, I posted it. And I told him, I said, bro, you know, this shit like kind of, it's goofy, bro, because, you know, Luckily, they didn't lose their life going into their crib. Cause I ain't gonna lie, if you see how they came in, bro. Hey, I'm, I'm I ain't even got no remorse from putting your ass on the ground. Oh, the sleep, sleep, sleep. Real, bro, Look, I'm talking about like, bro, they came in 
I'm talking about snatched the blinds down, came in that joint, came all the way in her bathroom where she was, nigga, just getting out the shower. They flew flopping her, bro, kicking her, hitting all in the chest. And I'm just like, this shit weird as hell. Like, everybody praising this shit in a sense. You know, our culture real messed up right now when it comes to praise and bullshit, you know. Yeah, and, uh, they, you they some, copycat too, like a yeah, motherfucker. You got some people on there that's like, you know, oh, yeah, this and that. But, and, and one lady was like, you know, that you can't go around jumping people, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, and not expect something to happen to you. But it's a different thing when you go out of your way to go make sure that you get your revenge back when you could have waited and caught her somewhere like outside of her apartment or outside. She, you know, it's, it's Minnesota big, but it's small. You could have caught it at the gas station or anything. You really risk your life by going to that young lady crib like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and whoever whoever her people is, like, definitely now, I don't think she got no no firearm or nothing like that because it would have been used how they did her, bro. Man. Like, like I want to let that shit go. You could have grabbed her. If a person come in my house like that, bro, and yeah. get to doing it, room. Like, uh, you ain't leaving out. You ain't leaving out straight, for sure. You, you going to the upper room. You, you leaving out through the roof. Listen, and I'm just like, man, <laughs> this shit crazy. Like, they, they really went inside this young lady's house, bro. And just uh, demolished it and did her wrong, but I'm sure God blessed them to live and get past whatever they was mad about. You know, I can't say that she was wrong for for for, for coming back because the girl got jumped and she felt like that she needed to get that off in order to feel the way she needed to feel. But one thing I can say is, when they get older and they look back on it, hopefully they will see that there was ignorance. You know what I'm saying? That was something that could have got you taken from your kids, your mom. You know what I'm saying? This Hopefully, shit was just crazy how they did it, bro. Hopefully they ain't looking back on that from a jail cell, but that's that's kind of the path. If you're going yeah. that stupid, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's, it's definitely, it's not it's not something that you should be out here doing, especially pulling up at nobody's house without having the attentions that it might happen, that I might not leave this place, for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you coming with two people against one? She could have easily to me, bro. That was a free kill. I ain't yeah. gonna. I hate to say it in that matter, but that was a free self defense type free, thing. Yeah. You know I mean? For real. <laughs> reach, uh, reach one, teach one. Yeah. <laughs> so all of y'all out here, man, that know them people and stuff like that, man. Y'all pipe that shit down, like encourage them not to even. Especially, man, don't encourage nobody to go to nobody's crib. That just ain't gonna never turn out the right way, regardless. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's a list of charges, man. List of charges. Oh, shit. they gonna have anything <laughs> invading or well, invading uh home invasion. They gonna have it. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of shit they gonna get. Uh, damaging property, all type of shit. Mm-hmm. But man, the more of this story, the more of this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, D D assault, right? Blah blah. Yeah. So the that's war is that's, that's a felony. A they big felony. A felony charge. The more of the story, though, man, is for uh the young people to not be scared to grow, man. Don't be scared to live alone. Don't be scared to get some things up when it's time to give it up. You know what I mean? Like it's different stages in life. You know what I'm saying? And you can, you can, you can like stop your growth by not knowing when to go to that next level. You know what I mean? Like, yep. you already conquered this. You already did this. You went to the club 16 years at your life. Now what you gonna do now? You know what I'm saying? When you get to this 35, 30 plus type age, what you gonna do? It's cool to go out, have fun, socialize, but don't be scared to grow. Don't be scared to live. Don't be scared to compromise with people. Like in the incidents with them little girls, don't be don't be scared to get an understanding verbally though, without going to that physical point. You know what I mean? Don't don't be scared to do that because a lot of our culture they always enhance and and like I said, praise the negative. Oh man, they did this to you. You should go do this and that. And that person that's saying they probably ain't never been through nothing. Yeah. Ever. They need to go find something to do. But <laughs> instigate though, you know what I mean? Go find something to do, man. Yeah. <laughs> So keep growing, keep uh keep keep wanting to live long, keep compromising, keep living to understand, 
not listening to respond and 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 uh having fucked up actions behind impulsive thinking you know what i'm saying uh these are some things that we experienced through our little journey in life uh now yeah. like i said a travel advisor okay yeah i'm I about to say that uh <laughs> take, take the uh some of that club shit and turn it into travel shit yeah right. so rapper you know what i mean like now now we talking about traveling and uh, I ain't gonna get too deep into it because I ain't got my little business professional collar suit on. You know what I mean? I'm gonna be hitting <laughs> y'all in with the, you know what I mean? I'm be coming on that jump with the collar shirts and the glasses, looking like a professor. You know what I mean? <laughs> looking like what we wanna, what, what we wanna do. We we looking successful because we wanna mm-hmm. bring people in and let them know that you know it's a whole world out here, man. And don't be scared to get out here. Don't let nobody make you think that. You can't go, oh, this going on over there, man. War going on right here in our own states, right here on our next block. Yeah. It's some niggas that shooting randomly and hitting innocent kids and women and shit. So miss me with that story. So yeah. let's get out here, explore the world, get some different connects, you know what I'm saying? Network with people and uh just keep growing, man. Keep going up. Don't stay stuck. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? I think that's about yeah. all I get, guy. What you get, man? Yes, sir. But with you on that, like you said, I mean, you pretty much locked it in, and I said it too. Take some of these uh, bad experiences and, and push that energy into something positive, something you can enjoy. That's that's the reason why a lot of these girls go on girls trips is because they can't sit in a club with some of you dumb ass guys. I ain't gonna say the the N word. Some of you dumb dudes. They can't even enjoy their drink because y'all fight knocking over their drinks they done paid for. Ain't nobody compensating. <laughs> so they 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 getting on that 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 cruise. They get on right. that boat cruise. They hopping on the train. They hopping on the on the on the flight. Man, get away from y'all. <laughs> we get it. We get it. Oh man, we're gonna have it all. Oh, boat cruises, uh man, flights, um, uh, uh excursions, all different type of stuff with this program. So again, Excursion. next Wednesday, again. next Wednesday, April the 17th at 8 p.m. Central Time, man. That's when we having a travel uh program lunch. We just joined it to it, so I am an official travel advisor now. And uh, it's some stuff that can be beneficial to y'all. So, like I said, if y'all interested in getting out here and traveling the world, inbox Cho Cheddar at my Facebook on Instagram. You will see at the end of the show where you can inst- uh, you can message the HRG podcast or reach out to Gotti, Lee, and whoever, and they'll lead you to who they need to lead you to, and we'll get you in tune and get you ready for your your vacation, man. Your vacation or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, uh, your vacation. Go kick your feet up, man, and hey. Have a pina colada and and and, and 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 do your do your mate bed on a balcony oh, on the island. Have a mai tai pina colada. What's that other one? <laughs> Mimosa. Yeah. What do they call it? Mimosa. Mimosa. Yeah. Have a samosa with a mimosa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shout out I to like Lee, that. man. Find out to Lee over there. If y'all don't see him, man, please believe he on his grind on his education right now. Extra oh, yeah. heavy. Yes, sir. Bro, 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 bro had a long day in school today. And as his bro, he always gonna hold him down, you know. we That's what we thrive for. We thrive for greatness over here, growth, development, you know what I'm saying? Taking shit to the next level. And that's what bro doing right now. And that's what everybody that's watching this show, if you a single mama, a single father, uh, a father, you know what I'm saying? I say father <laughs> for a, a, a single mom mother. that do the daddy father, roles father, and the father, father. father roles, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like, this for you, like, this can help you get out here and advance and show your children different things when it comes to this travel, uh, when it comes to this content that we bring in and stuff like this. So, like I said, y'all always, man, show us love. We appreciate it. Uh, we need y'all to continue to subscribe, though. The subscribers are going up, but we need more. We also mm-hmm. need you guys to utilize that STARS program, man. Don't be scared to send STARS. All you got to do is send a couple stars that can help with different things like give backs and stuff like that, uh, mm-hmm. different merch, whatever we might do. And eventually, we're going to be able to do some trip giveaways on here. You know what I'm saying? We're oh, being man. in the travel program. So, yeah. Get right. Get right. We're going to have it right. So, uh, 
I think that concludes this conversation, man. You know, we're going to tap in with y'all next Friday. We'll have some at the top of the week for what the show going to be next Friday, what the episode going to be. Uh, we got to go out like we came in, but before we do that, we just want to put this on y'all mind, man. Don't be scared to grow. Don't be scared to develop. Don't be scared to understand and keep this shit going upward. Mm-hmm. We're going to go out like we came in, pray it up, Man, stay papered up. Stay big. big work. Work. Until next time. What's up to the hoes? What's up with the hoes? What's up with the hoes? Yes. What's up? What's up with the hoes? What's up with the hoes? Yes. What's up? What's up with the hoes? What's up with the hoes? Yes. What's up? What's up with the hoes? What's up with the hoes? Yes. I said pray, pray. I'm paper. They no pole. That's a move. I stay pray, pray. I'm paper. They no pole. That's a move. I stay pray, pray. I'm paper. They no pole. That's a move. I stay pray, pray. I'm paper. They no pole. That's a move. You know, Auntie Mama thumbing up. It's H O G. We coming up. They like, subscribe, and share. And it's about time we run these numbers up. Ain't nobody coming with the topics and the fly hitting. They be trying to duplicate the show. I guess they in they feeling. We don't care. Impact over license. How we do it here? Come and get some gamers internationally spitting here. Minnesota and the Kansas. We got ties in Germany. Yes, from Pakistan and Singapore. They rock with HOG. Like, subscribe, notifications to all. Like, subscribe, notifications.